Good morning from Universal Orlando Resort's parking garage. We are headed in today because they have put up more Halloween Horror Nights decorations in some of the scare zones. And I'm so darn excited. Like, I can't wait for Halloween season to officially begin. It's not far off. We're 30 days out today from the start of Halloween Horror Nights. We still don't have all of the haunted houses announced. So we don't have any scare zones announced actually. So we're gonna be making some guesses as to what the scare zones that we're seeing are. So let's head inside and have a look around. A little bit different wording to the announcements here at Universal. So in case you didn't catch that, they changed it. So it used to say that masks are optional for fully vaccinated guests. Now it says we encourage you to follow CDC guidelines and wear your mask indoors. So they're not mandating or saying that it's part of the rules. They're just saying we encourage you to wear masks. So I'm gonna keep mine on all day. And to wash your hands often. We encourage all our guests to follow CDC guidelines and to wear face coverings while indoors. Thank you for your cooperation. Over at Auntie Anne's, they've got a bunch of wet paint signs. I like that they're themed to Universal though. They've got Woody Woodpecker on them. We're listening to some One Direction out here on City Walk. So over here across from NBC Grill Brew, they've got a step and repeat for the Olympics and then a spot to watch them. So they've got some benches set up that are covered away from the rain. It is supposed to rain all day today, but you just sit here and watch the Olympics live up on the Jumbotron here. I don't know what event is happening right now. Right now it's just the Olympic flag. So it is on the Olympic channel though. Just kind of going over some of the swimming stuff. Here's a new A-frame sign that I haven't seen before that says, we encourage all guests to follow CDC guidelines and to wear face coverings while indoors. They also say that we encourage social distancing between guests, but there are no markers on the ground anymore. We still have a sign out front with a medallion out front celebrating the Olympics. It ends on August 8th. Today is August 3rd, so we only got five days left. I wonder if the food booths are open in Music Plaza. As we are walking in, right there in Plaza of the Stars, we can see they have a lot of decorations up. They got some truss work, some lights, some signs. Dang, this is exciting. Hey guys, Future Tim here. As you all saw in one of the previous clips, this was filmed on August 3rd. Today is August 5th, so some things have changed throughout Halloween Horror Nights, and they've even made a few announcements. So I'm gonna be popping in here and there throughout this video to kind of talk about those things and show off some pictures from some new developments in the scare zones. So the first thing that we wanna talk about is this scare zone that we just went through. They also added in a large neon sign on top of the truss work that reads Halloween Horror Nights, and then they have some candles that they added to the legs of the truss going up to add some like spooky ambiance candlelight. All right, let's go check out some more of the Halloween Horror Nights props. We've got a sign out front that says Halloween Horror Nights, 30 years of fear. And I'm kind of assuming that this is an icon scare zone because we've got the director, caretaker, fear, and Jack right here on this sign. I always like the juxtaposition of seeing all the Horror Nights characters in the stroller parking section. We have a little bit of a stage over here too. So that's very exciting. We don't know what's gonna be on the stage or on these scaffoldings, but probably one of the icons, most likely. We have another sign over here with some more icons. We've got Lady Luck, Storyteller, Usher. We have Chance over here. And then we've got Eddie a lesser known icon, but it's still a fan favorite. So the story behind Eddie is that he was supposed to be the event icon for Halloween Horror Nights 11, but the terror attacks that happened on 9-11, 2001, changed that and they returned it back to Jack the Clown that year. So Eddie was supposed to be Jack's brother. And I like some of his names. His names are Eddie Schmidt, Edgar Sawyer, or Edgar Dice Slay. So this morning, Halloween Horror Nights announced another haunted house, and that is called HHN Icons Capture. This house features icons from years past, such as Jack, the Usher, Storyteller, the Director, and more, and they'll be joining forces to taunt you and terrify you at every turn. A cool part about this house is that all of these icons will be in one house for the first time ever. In this house, you'll also encounter their tormented victims and their demonic super fans, which I think is very funny because it's like they're like nodding 
towards the Halloween Horror Nights super fans. Like if somebody is a super fan of Jack, like how far would they go? Would they be willing to put everything on the line for Jack? We have to wait to find out. But the coolest part of this house is that every time you go through, you have a chance of seeing a different icon reign supreme. So it, it like kind of encourages you to come back and experience the house over and over and over again because you never know which icon is going to end up being the one that is the supreme icon at the end of the house. And speaking of coming back again and again, another thing that happened this morning is that Halloween Horror Nights released all of their tickets. That includes Rush of Fear, Frequent Fear, Frequent Fear Plus, Ultimate Frequent Fear. And all of these tickets have an option of adding Express and that means that every single ticket option is available for purchase now. So that we was, we've been waiting a while for this to happen. We were all kind of like, everybody in the community was kind of guessing if it was going to happen or not this year. But as it turns out, as of this morning, all of the tickets have been released. The only thing is that this year they are not offering, as of yet, a, an annual pass holder discount on any of the frequent fear tickets. This is something they've done in the past, not something they're doing yet that we know of this year. So all of these tickets that we're talking about, like Rush of Fear, Frequent Fear, Frequent Fear Plus, these are all multi-night tickets as opposed to a single night ticket. So you save a little bit of money by getting a multi-night ticket if you're planning on going more than once. But we will link the Halloween Horror Nights ticket page in the description down below in case you want to learn more about what nights are for what ticket and how much each ticket costs. So we were kind of hoping to be able to try some more of this food here at the Tokyo Boost, but even during the Olympics, they're not open. Maybe they'll open a little bit later. I feel like they should be getting prepared. It's almost 11 o'clock right now, so I don't know if this if these booths are opening today. I'm leaning towards no, but we'll check back before we leave. Oh, it looks like they're filming a commercial or something over there. Theme park, pigeons walking through this area, wondering why there's no food booths open for the Tokyo Olympics. Heading into the New York area of the park, and there are more decorations up in here and on this stage. This is pretty exciting because I feel like this will definitely be a little tiny stage show and they've had a stage in this location in years past this is in new york right across from the macy's and i'm sure that that will be a halloween horror nights tribute store once they close down jurassic world have another another little barricade type thing with a gigantic unimog back behind it holy cow also i like these vats full of i'm guessing kool-aid no nah, it's probably just blood <laughs> it might just be some sort of like brown liquid though, but I feel like uh, it's meant to represent blood because I think maybe this scare zone will be people harvesting blood. Seeing more of these symbols everywhere. I don't see what's happening in the back of this. It kind of looks like it's going to be a cage of some sort. Kind of see it's got some some bars in here can't see anything else inside of there. Everything is just covered up with this black mesh. This little thing's neat. It's like a gigantic little tiny truck. Ooh. This looks like this piping was added after the fact. Maybe there's gonna be like little squirties of blood coming out. You never know. They've added some more theming and lights to these towers, these scaffolding towers. This one's number one, and then there's some more in this direction, like number two is over there. I'm gonna keep looking around. Some sort of like contraption here maybe? It's got hoses going into it. These are covered up, so we're assuming that these are bodies of some sort. Some more of these vats of a red liquid that had a sign on them that's been covered up. So I'm wondering what that sign said. Hmm. It might be a while before, it'll be exactly 38 days before we find out what was on those signs. Because it's 30 days until Halloween Horror Nights. I came back over by this stage because I just noticed this symbol is everywhere. So we've got like a little concrete barricade. Actually, it's made out of wood, probably to make it easier to move. But it looks like a concrete barricade. And just like a ton, ton of barrels. There are barrels all around this scare zone. Oh, what's this? The controller sees all. Who's the controller? When we first started seeing props appear in this scare zone, there was a pile of barrels here that was all covered up. And now it is gone, but this tower has been decorated more. So all the towers look identical except for the numbers on them. 
like that one down there is number three. This one's number two. And then the first one that we saw over there was number one. So I'm not sure. Maybe they're, they're like the people that are employed by the controller to see all. Like kind of like guard towers almost. This set of barrels over here is very similar to the one that we saw that's not there anymore. This one was here the last time we were here. But these tubs full of this red liquid were not. Something else I should point out is as you're walking through this scare zone during Halloween Horror Nights, be prepared for the scare actors to hit these sort of things with something hard to make a loud noise as you're walking by. Okay, yeah, I'm kind of feeling this. The fact that they have like, there's probably a dead body like a, a mannequin underneath this tarp and they are sucking out its fluids maybe into these barrels or into these cube containers. Whoever the controller is, he's in charge of making sure that you follow the rules or else you will have your blood drained for some sinister purpose. So from the New York section, kind of, Mummy's kind of like down there by the Palace Theater. We are going to turn left and head back towards the front of the park because there should be a scare zone sort of near the end of Transformers. One over there in Hollywood and one over here in Central Park. All right, so not much back here by Transformers, just this one lighting truss we've already seen and it only actually has one light on it. That's just a gobo pointed at the side of the building. I think that's all that we'll see over here. We do have a few atmospheric lights over there, but no other decorations for Halloween Horror Nights that I can see. Back here in the Hollywood section of the park, and I'm not seeing anything other than lights up on the roofs over there. But no other decorations around the streets. We are going to go into the Five and Dime and have a look at some of the merchandise for Halloween Horror Nights because they change it up every once in a while. All right, let's head into the Five and Dime, have a look at some of the merchandise they have in there. Kind of looks like it might be the same stuff that we've already seen, but I have seen posts showing that they are rotating it. So maybe we just happen to be here when it's on the same stuff that it was before. There's definitely less of it. So they are pushing through some merchandise. Here's one that I haven't seen before. It is a Beetlejuice shirt that is black light reactive and this is $30. I like it. So there's nothing on the back, just this picture of Beetlejuice as a snake here on the front. And then on the side, it says Beetlejuice Halloween Horror Nights. How many times did I say Beetlejuice? It does seem that they have every style of shirt in stock here. So we've got the Jack shirt that says I'm back. We've got the Haunting of Hill House that has the Tall Man. We've got Beetlejuice. We've got Frankenstein's Monster. And then we've got the Bride of Frankenstein Lives, which is actually the name of the Halloween Horror Nights house. That's one of the ones that we know. I just noticed that these are matching shirts. So this one says, this time the mate demands a monster. And then over here, the Frankenstein's Monster one says, the monster demands a mate. So it's like, like a, a couple shirt. There is a creature from the Black Lagoon statue over here. Look at those feet on this guy. But it is for sale right now for $25,000. So if you are in the market for a life-size statue, creature from the Black Lagoon with a realistic butt, then you're in luck for sale right here. All right, so kind of right over there is the entrance to the park. We're in Hollywood right now, and we are turning in this direction because we're headed over to Central Park. We came from the New York section of the park over there. And this is where we're headed, through Central Park, which is another scare zone location. So over here in front of Mel's drive-in is the mystery machine, and this is normally where the gang from Scooby-Doo meets, but right now, they're over here by the Hollywood Hotel near Cafe La Bamba. I'm assuming because it's a little bit of a rainy day. It's not raining right now, but it's supposed to rain all day. Oh, I think they're moving over to their traditional location now because it is not raining anymore. Another thing I wanted to point out is this gate right here. There used to be a big ornate gate that is not here at the moment. I think that they are probably refurbishing it, but this is what we call the esoteric gate. And you can see over, oh, I think they're headed backstage. They're all done for the day. Bye, have a good day. Have fun solving your mysteries. Oh yeah, I am. <laughs> but the whole reason we call these the esoteric gates is because, see the sign here says esoteric pictures, as if this were a made up studio 
behind these gates, and they would be the esoteric gates. From the esoteric gate, we are turning in this direction over here to Central Park, which is just past Central Park Crepes. I might stop by there for a crepe today. There's one that we haven't tried yet that's a seasonal crepe. So let's see if we see any Halloween Horror Nights decorations over here in Central Park. So, so far here in Central Park, all that we've got are lighting towers with lights on them, but that's about it at the moment. And of course, one of the staples of Halloween Horror Nights are strobe lights, and there's one up there on that lighting tower right there. We know this area of the park will have strobes in it. Most of the scare zones will, but this one in particular, we've seen it. There is a strobe light up. So I don't know what this thing is that's covered with some like black visqueen. Maybe a generator, maybe a fog machine, maybe a subwoofer. It would put some real bass in this area, but I don't, it doesn't need to be covered up if it is a subwoofer because it'll be out. I don't know. Maybe it is a prop that they're covering for right now. This area in particular does have a lot of speakers. Kind of wondering why they went with two different styles of speaker. These white ones kind of stick out like a sore thumb, don't they? Hmm. Maybe it is to increase the, uh, the fullness of the music or the sound effects back here. Maybe the white ones are sound effects and the black ones are just music. Here's another box that is covered with black visqueen, but this is most definitely a fog machine. So we're real close to having some fog here. Oh, they've got some lights on the ground too. Some low lying lights that will really pop in the fog, really, really accentuating the fog, making it a little bit harder to see in this area. This is new. They have moved Patrick Star inside of the SpongeBob store pants and he's doing actual meet and greets. You can't get a photo right next to him, but you there is a rope out front that you have to stand in front of and you can get your photo with Patrick Star. Over here by ET, there's a stage and they put a sign up on the stage talking about DreamWorks Destination, which is the dance party back in the old Day in the Park with Barney location. And we've been to it and Jackson loved it. We'll put a link to that video in the description down below. It's a super fun time. So as we head back into the Springfield section of the park, I don't expect to see any Halloween Horror Nights props back here because this area of the park is typically known for roaming hordes of scare actors. So like in years past, there have been clowns wielding chainsaws or like prison inmates wielding chainsaws. So I don't think that there are going to be any decorations or lights or anything back here, but I do expect to see some characters back here during Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything back here in the Springfield section. So our next section will be over in front of the London waterfront. We should see some lights and then over in San Francisco, we should see some decorations, maybe. Over here by Men in Black, looking back over the bushes back there, we can see a little bit of a facade of one of the haunted houses. Looks like it says, welcome to Scary Ohio. And Cary, Ohio holds a special place in the hearts of people that enjoy Halloween Horror Nights. So the whole reason that Cary, Ohio is so important to Halloween Horror Nights is that because it serves as the backdrop or the location of many, many, many different houses and scare zones and characters, backstories and things like that. Uh, there's been at least 20 appearances of the town of Cary, Ohio or the county that it is in or its counterpart, Cary, France, uh, throughout Halloween Horror Nights history. So a lot of bad things happen in relation to Cary, Ohio and Halloween Horror Nights. It doesn't have a good track record. So that's why this house back here that has Welcome to Scary Ohio on the outside of the facade. We're assuming that this is going to be a Cary, Ohio themed house. Maybe explaining why Cary, Ohio has such a storied past. You never know. So over here in the London waterfront area, we do have some lighting trusses and rigs, but we know that there's not gonna be a scare zone back here. Should just be some spooky lighting on the buildings. Just kind of some like atmospheric stuff. Heading into the San Francisco section of the park and it looks like we've got some huge trusses in this area over here. So it looks like these trusses just got installed. Still no lighting or any wiring or any sort of decorations on them. But we know from years past and from other trusses that we've seen today that these will have some decorations, some lighting, some props on them. And then we props all through this area of San Francisco because this will be a scare zone. We still have no announcements as to what this scare zone will be. So the custom gear shop is the gift shop as you exit Fast and Furious Supercharged and right out front, 
There is a tower of scaffolding covered in black scrim with some speakers on the top. I'm wondering if somebody's gonna be up there dancing around or performing up there. And I'm sure there's gonna be some other decorations other than just this black scrim around this scaffolding. So I don't see anything other than these this ladder and the fact that there's a platform up there that gives me any sort of clue as to what's gonna be happening here. So no other sort of decorations or lights or anything other than these trusses out here in San Francisco. So this scare zone actually had some props added to it this morning, August 5th. And after looking at some of these props, we didn't really know what they were. So we kind of did a little bit of research and we found HHN Nightmares Twitter, it's a fan site, and they've had a pretty good track record of predicting what the houses and scare zones are going to be. And they predicted that this scare zone will be something called Crypt TV. And after looking at some of the pictures, we noticed this little skull logo in the bottom left-hand corner of this prop and that is Crypt TV's logo. So this is pretty much confirmed to be a Crypt TV scare zone. Now we didn't really know what Crypt TV was, so we looked it up and we found out that Crypt TV is a company focused on producing horror themed digital content. So this company was founded by Jack Davis and Eli Roth and backed by Jason Blum and Blumhouse Productions. So that has me really excited. So I think we're gonna be doing some research and watching some of Crypt TV's stuff to get ready for Halloween Horror Nights. So that's it for all the new stuff as of today, August 5th. Uh, but let me know if there's anything that you've seen this far in the video. Like, what are you excited for for Halloween Horror Nights this year? What scare zone are you most excited for? Which house are you most excited for? Leave us some comments down below. I'm interested to hear them. And now, back to the video. Back in the New York section of the park, and we're gonna head over to Music Plaza, see if any of those food booths for the Olympics opened, and see if we missed anything here in New York. I'm already seeing one poster, or one banner that we missed. Here it is. Kind of over top of the Palace Arcade. There's another poster, another banner up there that says submit to the controller. I wonder who the controller is. He's kind of like the Wizard of Oz, right? Well, still not open, so I guess we're getting a crepe today. All right, we're over here at Central Park Crepes. We're gonna get this seasonal crepe. Raspberry and passion fruit. Here's something interesting. They've got different symbols for vegetarian and vegan. So like two little leaves means vegan. But one is just vegetarian. This is my raspberry and passion fruit cream crepe. Kind of excited to try it. Looks delicious. This is the seasonal crepe. It is fresh raspberries, passion fruit cream, red velvet cake, and cinnamon streusel. I'm not really sure about the cinnamon streusel in there. Everything else sounds like it's going to be delicious together. And this was $8.99. All right, I've got a bunch of napkins and some knives and forks. I'm not really sure how I'm going to eat this. Kind of feeling like I just want to tear the paper, but the paper is super thick on this, so it's kind of hard to tear. Also, I feel like I have to be very like gentle with a crepe because it's so thin. All right, here we go. Okay, all that I got there was the cream. Oh, the passion fruit cream is good, and the red velvet, and of course the crepe. Hmm. A little bit of raspberry there. Okay, this is nice and refreshing, but still substantial. It's already falling apart a little bit. Now that I've had a few bites, I'm really enjoying it. It is nice and light. It's like eating a handful of raspberries with a little bit of like red velvet cake on there. So imagine a red velvet cake with a passion fruit whipped icing, like a whipped cream icing, and then some raspberries on top. And that's basically what you got here. It's nice. It's great for a hot summer day like this. Beat Builders just started across the way they're a construction themed percussion show. So you'll probably hear a little bit of them drumming in the background. I would totally order this again. I will have to say though, it did take about 20, 30 minutes for me to get my crepe from the time that I ordered to the time that I got my crepe because it's just a little kiosk. Like they're not set up for a large throughput. They're in a prime location, but they've only got two burners making crepes in there. So, and it's only big enough for three people, a cashier and two chefs. Not a lot of space and not a lot of like output coming out of that kitchen. So be prepared to wait. It is delicious, but you will have to wait. And if you order a bunch of stuff together as a group, some things might come out first. So don't expect to eat everything all at the same time with your entire group. I would just say, if you get it, just eat it. I totally forgot about the cinnamon streusel and I just hit some of it on the very bottom down here. I don't know if you can see it, kind of right there is the cinnamon streusel. Well, let's see. Let's see how it goes with the with the rest of this. I'm gonna try to like pull this out a little bit. It adds an interesting crunch to it, but it doesn't really like 
affect the taste of the rest of it too much. It just kind of adds a little bit of a spice flavor to it. Yeah, that was the only thing I was concerned about when I saw the ingredients was the cinnamon streusel. I would still, still totally order this again, even with the cinnamon streusel. I wanted to give you like a cross section of it. You can see the raspberries and the, you really see the passion fruit cream down here. And then the red velvet cake. Not seeing a lot of cinnamon streusel in this cross section. I think it's all the way down in the bottom. That's like the first thing they put in. All right, so we are outside of the gates right now, outside of the gates of Universal Studios. And I wanted to point out something. There are some lighting trusses over here, but I, don't, I do not know what they're for. They might be for Halloween. They might be for something else. Maybe for some sort of Olympic thing that they've got going on, because they are set up pretty early for Halloween out here in front of the park. But maybe then again, they're getting the lighting set up so that they know where to hang the banners. I guess they would hang the banners first and then point the lights at them. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. I came over here to end the video. As you guys know, I like to have the universal globe behind me, but these are the bleachers that I was talking about at the beginning of the video that are set up to watch the Olympics on the Jumbotron at NBC Grill Brew. Something else I wanted to point out that I just noticed is that there's a bar back here with some tables out in front of it so that if you're here watching the Olympics, you can get some snacks and some beverages. And some crackers, some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. It's like you're watching a baseball game. So there you have it. That was our trip out to Universal Studios Florida to look at all of the progress on Halloween Horror Nights and the construction of the scare zones and the adding of different elements. Very, very excited for Halloween to come. It's not far off. Like Disney's Halloween event starts next week. Universal starts in 30 days. It's gonna be Halloween here in Orlando before you know it. I know it's a little bit earlier than most other places, but we got a lot of Halloween here and we love it. So we're starting early. But also I cannot wait to hear what the scare zones are going to be. We still do not have any announcements for scare zones or any announcements for the frequent fear passes, which are like their seasonal passes. And we don't know all of the houses yet. We're still kind of guessing on some of them. I don't know, hopefully those announcements come soon. Stay tuned, as soon as we get those announcements, we will let you all know, and we'll be back to do some more construction updates as we get closer and closer to the event starting. So, all in all, a fantastic day. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. Hi, I'm Julia, it's my bachelorette. And, and now it's time to pay the price! Woo! Woo! <laughs>